Hey, welcome back to the Metropol Grid. My name is Andre. Thanks so much for tuning in. Happy holidays. This is a quick little deck dive video I wanted to put together and pre-record before we pop out for the holidays. Hopefully you're doing well. And right off the top, very important to say that this is not my deck. This is Bahram Wu's deck that it's an Apex deck that was just published up on uh, Netrunner DB. And of course the link is in the description below. So if you want to click through, give this deck a like, a favorite, leave a comment that would help out Bahram uh, definitely a lot. So what are we looking at here? This is a really exciting deck and this is Apex. One of the three mini factions back from uh, Dated and Destiny from the old FFG sets. And the mini factions are very fascinating. They're beloved, but out of the three, Apex has classically been by a huge mile, the weakest of the three mini factions. If you're not familiar with mini factions are, these are their own faction. Apex is its own mini faction. It has, there's about like 12 to I think 15 cards that are an Apex mini faction. And that's why Apex has 25 influence to spend splashing cards from outside of faction. Now the problem with Apex, well, there is a very, very powerful Apex card. It's a lot of times not the best card to put in most Apex decks. A lot of Apex decks are really install heavy and really combo-tastic and kind of hard to spin up, let alone they have very little economy. And that's because Apex has a really bad sentence on Apex text box, which says you cannot install non-virtual resources. That hurts. It's really important in a lot of these decks, a lot of the mini factions, you're spending a fair bit of influence getting economy from out of faction and you're playing things like liberated accounts, Telower contract, daily casts. These are very basic and very staple economy resources, but unfortunately none of them are virtual. So Apex is stuck in this really weird space where they cannot interact with a lot of the card pool. But despite there being, I think almost, are there actually any virtual resources in Parhelion? I'm not sure. But despite that, I think Apex got a lot of support from the latest set that came out, Parhelion. Unfortunately, they're not virtual, but we can make them work. This is Apex. Again, you can't play non-virtual resources, but when your turn begins, you may install a card from your grip face down. It's worth knowing that face down cards in Netrunner, they have no text, they have no type. They're just technically installed cards. And we're gonna be playing a lot of abilities that use installed cards as an alternate cost to interact with the game. So having face down cards on the table is actually quite good for us. Now the big card from Parhelion that supports Apex is Tsyahya Banhar Gantulga. The new uh, unique connection, it's only three influence, we're spending nine on this. This connection, you'll notice, uh, is not virtual. We'll get to that. But more so importantly is when your turn starts, if you have a Banhar installed, you can pick a server. The first time you encounter an ice on that server, its subroutines that resolve are replaced by do one net damage subroutines. And that seems a bit scary. That seems kind of, I think, pretty frightening to some players, but I think this is a really important, a really potentially powerful card. The idea is that so many factions in the game that have no interest in doing net damage to you, it's not part of their win condition. So taking some ice that does something really mean that ends the run, that keeps you out of the remote server, that stops you from stealing agendas, you can replace those end the run subroutines with simple net damage subroutines, which means you can just about get through one ice a turn on any server as long as you have enough cards in hand. And that's actually quite important. That means you cannot stop the runner from running central servers. You can't stop the remote server at the right time. And while this is only the outermost ice, uh, that is still a very powerful ability. But this gets even better and easier to play specifically in Apex. Apex has a console. This is Heartbeat. It's a very cheap console at two credits. It gives you one MU, but most importantly, it says you can trash one of your installed cards to prevent one damage. Now, very importantly, it's just damage. It doesn't care what type of damage it is. So you can use this to prevent net damage, let alone meat damage, and even core damage, which is incredibly relevant in the modern standard meta. But the best thing here is now with a Banhar, you can run a server, have an ice that resolves two net damage subroutines, and you can just prevent that. You are trashing your installed cards on the table, which are generally better to trash those than cards in hand. You can always choose to take the cards from hand. But this means that we actually have a way to deal with ice very aggressively as long as we can set a banner and have enough things installed. And I promise you, we definitely can. Now, the big question, of course, is how do we get banner on the table? Banner is non-virtual, which means we can include it in our deck, but we literally cannot install it. And that is the magic of the card assimilator. Now, this is a virtual resource. It's a very clumsy. It's five credits to install. It's five influence, but you have to spend half your turn. You spend two clicks to take a face down card and flip it face up. Now, flipping a card face up is not installation. So the basic idea here is that using Apex's ability at the start of their turn, we're going to install face down a uh, banner. And then somewhere on that turn or in the future, we'll use the simulator's two clicks to flip the banner face up. Now the banner will be blank because banner only chooses a server at the start of the turn. This won't be installed in the start of the turn. And then at the start of the turn, next turn, we'll be able to use a banner. That's what we have to do to cheat Apex, uh, the non-virtual clause. But in this deck, it is almost definitely worth it. We'll talk a bit more about Assimilator, but Assimilator on its own also gives you lines to different other plays for some cool value. But this is the one thing you have to play in Apex. And it's a bit clumsy to ensure that you can play non-virtual resources. And the banner engine in Apex feels really good right now. 
So let's just go through the deck really quickly. Firstly, we're on three dirty laundry. Apex does not have a lot of economy. It just has to be stated. That's one of the big things dragging down the Apex faction. So we're going to play as much neutral economy as we can. And dirty laundry is fantastic. We want to be running once a turn a lot of times. So why not get your money and access at the same time? We're playing two overclock. This card on its own actually might be able to be cut. Uh, it gives you five credits for a run, four credits in total, and we can use that really well with some of our bin breakers. These are the Anarch breakers you can install mid run when you find the appropriate piece of ice that's res or on, when it's encountered, excuse me, as long as these are trashed in your bin. And we're pretty good at trashing cards. We have three copies of Prey. This is a really strong Apex card. This says when you pass a piece of ice that you just need to pass it. You don't even need to break all the subroutines. You can trash an equal amount of installed cards equal to the strength of the ice. Now this lets you destroy slowly ice on the board in a very targeted way. It's hard for the corp to play around this. And that means if you can trash the right ice, you can leave the ice on the outermost that you want to Banhar through. It's important to know that the corporation can play around Banhar. If they put their good ice behind some just cheap ice that they res, you still have to deal with the good ice when Banhar gets eaten by the ice wall on the outermost. So this allows you that flexibility to trash the real low strength stuff. Stuff that there's some really good stuff right now that gets played that's really low strength, like endless Eula. Um, and you get to trash that at almost no cost. Zero actually counts as trashing zero cards. We have three copies of Reboot. This is so important. The deck is fueled by having installed cards to trash, and this does run archives and basically get five more hit points for your engine. Now, this is not playable in the early game, but once you get to the mid to late game, it's easy to get five cards in your heap, and then you're kind of just more gas and more gas. This is something that corporations in theory kind of need to play around, but it's hard to keep you out of archives unless you double ice archives, which maybe that's the correct play. I'm not actually sure, but this card is so important to refueling your engine. You have three copies of spec work. This is something that I changed in my version of the list. This allows you to trash your program to gain uh, three credits in sum and draw two cards. That's pretty good. And specifically because in Apex, you have the uh, copies, you have three copies of the card Harbinger. Harbinger takes no MU, it takes up no credits. And when you trash this, it goes and gets installed face down. It's a really good card for the deck because this counts as two trashes on a single install. Uh, that's really good for our, our whole engine that we're doing with the heartbeat. But the idea is you can spec work this card and then still have something to, to trash later on. We also have three sure gamble because it's sure gamble. In terms of the hardware, we talked about the heartbeat. It's so important with our banner engine, but very importantly, this deals with all kinds of damage. If you're worried about meat damage because you're floating a tag for a turn, it's still going to be a problem for you, the tag itself, because we're a very resource heavy deck. But this allows you to deal with meat damage, let alone net damage. If you're frustrated playing against personal evolution, you can ignore everything that they have by just having enough cards on the table. But most importantly right now, again, if you're playing an HB, there's a lot of core damage. Whether it's big old ice like Bloop or whether it's just Thule itself, this just kind of turns off everything and it's massively powerful in certain metas, including right now. We also have Waken Plant, another new card for Parhelion. And for three influences, it's pretty fair. It's a very powerful multi axis card. We get this down. While it does one meat damage, we can always prevent that if we really need to with our uh, heartbeat. But now our runs on HQ will eventually translate to a big run on R&D. And it's really hard for the corporation to keep us out when we can just take net damage instead of dealing with ice the way that they were intended to be dealt with. Resources. Three Assimilator, super important to the combo, super important to the whole engine, and it's important to know that you can flip up just about anything. So while we have two Dreamnet in the deck of, on its own, fantastic card. It gives us a card draw and a credit because we are digital. That's uh, part of our identity. It's one of the traits. Uh, say, for example, at the start of your turn, you install this face down using uh, your Apex ability. You can flip this up with Assimilator for two clicks. Now, if you're already going to install the Dreamnet for a click, a simulator is spending two clicks to basically install this and then also save three credits. So you click for three credits if you assimilate this place up as long as you install it clicklessly using Apex. And that's honestly not the worst. The econ of this deck is not robust, uh, so sometimes that's actually the right plays. You want to get some of your stuff early installed face down for free with Apex and then you flip it back up with the simulator. We're on a, one copy of Cyber Trooper Talud. I actually haven't played this card yet. I ended up cutting it by recommendations from Ba in the description here. Again, check out the deck list. And there's some other cards that will change. We'll show you what we did when we played the deck. But this, in theory, works pretty well with your Breaker Suite. You have the two Dreamnet, of course, very powerful. We have two Hunting Grounds. This is an Apex card that actually used to see a lot of play consistently. If there's enough ice in the meta that has when encountered text on it, this does really well to turn all that stuff out. There's not a lot right now in the modern meta. Uh, mostly NBN, I think, is the stuff that I'd really worry about. Things like Funhouse, Mesta Chesvo, you can turn all that text off, which is really good. But in any other matchup, you can go ahead and trash this to install three cards face down from your deck at instant speed. Which means if you ever don't have fuel uh, for your heartbeat engine, you can just go get fuel. And most importantly, too, if you're just digging to get something like a, a Banhar installed face down on the table, this is one of your fastest ways to dig for it. Again, any face down card is the same value as any other face down card if you're just heartbeating them away. And then finally, of course, we have Banhar. 
Very important. We have three copies of Wasteland. This is a credit econ engine. If you're going to be trashing your cards consistently every turn, why not get paid for them? Uh, this card I found to be a bit too slow and a bit too greedy for this deck. This deck has a lot of stuff that needs to spin up to, to get going. And this has always seemed like an awkward draw in the early to mid game. It's actually pretty good in the mid game, but I felt like we always had to put more pressure. I ended up cutting this, but this is definitely a very playable card if the games you're playing are a bit slower. Talking about icebreakers, we have one of each of these bin breakers from Anarch. Honestly, I don't know if you need to play these. In some of the matchups I've played so far, we've never really had the economy to afford to use these. It's important to have that sort of panic button in the list so that you are able to run into something. And if you need to, you can always uh, install these in a pinch. There are also things that you can trash and they come back if you need to. If you just need more cards to, to forfeit to, uh, to your engine. But on its own, there's a chance that you can save all this influence and play something else in the slot. I think there's some pretty cool ideas you can do there. Now, the one breaker that is quite sweet is Amakua. It's an AI breaker, so it breaks all types of ice, but it comes in at only zero strength. And whenever you access and you do not steal or trash, it gets a virus counter. While the corp can purge you down, its strength increases with virus counters. So with this, just this and Banhar, you can put up enough pressure where the Amakua slowly gets strength. And at that point, those are probably the two cards you need, plus the heartbeat just to run everything. Amakua is fantastic. Now, our last programs, we have three Harbingers. Now, this is the fuel for our engine. Again, it's two trashes for a single install. Sometimes you just install this face down and lose the extra value with Apex, but that's kind of okay, I suppose. And then we also have Reaver. Reaver is a very powerful card, commonly splashed in Shaper decks that are trying to trash their stuff consistently. But first time per turn that you trash an installed card, whether it's the Corpse or the Runners, and you're almost always going to be trashing your own cards, you get a card draw. And this is so important to make sure that your engine is technically positive on cards. If you just trash a card every turn and you don't get the reaver draw, you're going to find yourself behind in cards. While you can get card draw with things like DreamNet, this is really important. And it's also not unique. So you can hit situations where you trash a card and then draw two or three cards, and that actually pushes you forward. So the banner engine, with you cancel it with heartbeat, kind of pushes you forward. And this is very, very powerful. Now, I made a couple changes to the deck so far, and I'll show you what mine look like. Again, the deck list is below. Some of these were suggested by nice folks in the comments. This is the version that I ended up playing in the following videos. But in short, the deck is almost entirely the same. The things I changed, I dropped the three Wastelands, which I found to be a bit too slow. And in a spot, I'm running two Jailbreak just to have more multi-access. It felt really rough that we only had one multi-access card. Jailbreak on its own is pretty good. With Banhar in the early game, we can kind of confirm accesses on central servers, so why not get more card draw and see a couple more cards? I really like this thing. The other card we added was Mad Dash. Now, this card is absolutely fantastic in the modern meta. There's so many decks that are playing a bit unfairly that need the runner to steal four agendas while the corpse scores three or three and two. This just helps you win the game a lot faster. Now, we have a bit of multi-access, if we get the Waken plant, we can see four cards in R&D, and then hopefully just Mad Dash that, and maybe this gets you enough agenda points to win the game. Now, if you whiff with this card, you take a meat damage, which for this deck is not a real problem. You can heartbeat away that meat damage, so this card is uh, quite good in the list. Actually, there's one more change, and this was suggested uh, by ba, ba, is we dropped the Cyber Trooper Tell Loot to play Aesop's Pawn Shop. And Aesop's Pawn Shop is a non-virtual resource, so we actually can install it. So this falls into the camp of cards that we want to install face down with Apex and then flip face up. And then once we have that, we actually have a really strong econ engine. With Pawn Shop, we can trash an installed face down card once per turn or a Harbinger to gain three credits and then draw some amount of cards off Reaver. And while this directly does compete with our Heartbeat Banhar engine, you generally don't run out of cards. So as long as you balance how much economy you need in the list versus how many cards you need installed, this is quite good and allows you to get through your deck and get the economy to install everything and maybe trash some assets or deal some traces if you need to. This list is fantastic, and I've had a lot of fun with it. I think there's a lot of other ways you can play the deck, too. There's some really interesting stuff. I think Basilar Synth Gland at three influence. There's so many synth, uh, cybernetics that showed up in Parhelion, and this one requires two core damage when you install it. And the thing is that this is not an additional cost. So if you prevent the core damage, you can still play Basilar Synth Gland. Is it worth having an extra click in Apex? That's obviously pretty good, but uh, I, I think you can include this in your deck and either take some amount of core damage or just cancel all of it with Heartbeat. On that note, Zenith Chip. Also seems quite good. Uh, extra card draw when running centrals is fantastic. If you want to spend two influences, it's very doable. Stack this on top of DreamNet if you want to be very greedy. Of course, World Tree also a very powerful card that can work with this deck. It's worth knowing that face down cards don't have a type, so you're going to mostly use this with Harbinger. This is almost definitely a different list, but I think World Tree is worth experimenting with in just about every faction. And I think the last thing we can consider is Boomerang. Boomerang is really cool. It allows us some flexibility with our identity that we can rely maybe less on breakers and more on just, you know, the maybe the Amakua, but largely the Banhar and the Boomerangs. 
And bonus points to Boomerang. If you ever flip a Boomerang up with an assimilator, you don't have to you do the when you install text. So this just allows you to break two subroutines on any piece of ice that you encounter whenever you encounter it, which is kind of wild, as slow as that interaction is. Now, playing this deck in standard right now, I think this is the best Apex has ever felt. It feels aggressive. Again, you have to draw in the right order and you're still susceptible to tags, but it feels really good. I think a big part of that right now in the JNet lobby is there's a lot of things like Thule and Thule cares about core damage and we can just prevent core damage at barely an inconvenience. We just throw a card out with heartbeat so we can ignore this ability. We can ignore half the rice. We can ignore almost all the traps, the jupe stead. None of that matters. And it kind of feels great, if not a bit kind of one sided and unfair. I think too, people are playing bloop and bloop is really good ice. It's hard to break bloop, but if you actually have no programs installed, you get through bloop for just one card. You just prevent the core damage. Now this stops you from playing Amakua or your reverse, and that's a real cost. But the idea that we can do deal with bloop better than any faction ever is actually a really interesting way reason to consider apex right now. Now there are some weaknesses to that. The deck, we're not playing pinhole threading. So upgrade remote servers are kind of hard to deal with. If we ever have to end the run on the remote server and come back in the same turn, our banhar is turned off. And that's actually kind of difficult. Whether you can find some slots to slot, slot in some tech like pinhole threading, you might be in an okay spot. And of course, we're also not very good at dealing with tags. We can't play no free lunch unless we flip it up. And that's kind of a lot of work to deal with that. So tags are just going to be an issue. But let me tell you, you'll see the games coming up. I had so much fun with this deck. It's really cool to play Apex and actually feel kind of powerful and specifically deal with some very popular cards in the meta incredibly uh, easily. Now we have a couple games coming up. This is a bit of a fast one considering the holiday was sneaking up on us, but the list, the deck list Ba Ramu posted is in the description below. If you want to go in there, give a like, give a favorite to this deck list. That's definitely appreciated for Ba who did just about all the heavy lifting here. And that's it. It's really wild playing Apex and feeling powerful. Again, apologies to the Thule matchups. They can be a bit one sided if you get yourself going. Again, if you like this video, giving a like and subscribing to the channel helps us grow. Enjoy the games. Happy holidays. All right. We are playing. This is Baram Wu's Banar based uh, Apex deck. It's actually been really fun so far. Uh, we're playing against Thule, which is meant to be a really good matchup for us, considering they care about core damage and we inherently have the card Heartbeat that prevents all kinds of damage. So we can ignore their ability almost entirely as long as we have extra cards on the table to trash. And largely we should. We made a couple changes to the deck. We are running more cards like I think we have a bit more multi access. We have jail breaks. We have mad dash and we're running deuces wild for just some unconditional draw because we we're a bit slow to set up. If we want to get Banar down, which we can't mind you, Apex cannot install non virtual resources. You have to kind of jump through some hoops. So we're going to try and find the assimilator to flip up a Banar. Again, there's a both two, three ofs in our list. We found the assimilator in hand. That's a big old clunky uh, five cost install, but this is actually a lot more economy than you'd expect in our opening hand. We're playing against Thule. Thule is one of the new IDs from uh, Parhelion, and I don't, so far I've been a bit underwhelmed by it. It's generally pretty slow. They generally don't have a strong economy. So as long as we can contest their economy options, uh, we're in an okay spot. We also figure out what kind of cards they have or what kind of ice suite they have, because if they're on harmonics, we deal with harmonics really well. In fact, bloop, we can break for one card if we have no installed programs, and that's kind of sick. We're going to install this thing face down. At this point, we just want to draw up to find our banner because our banner is our most important card. Prey is pretty good, too. If they're running harmonics, we can get through echoes uh, for no cards and permanently trash them. We have a reboot, which is a bit slow. And then we also have a uh, hunting grounds, which doesn't actually matter in this matchup. I think we want to use this card maybe to install top three cards of your stack face down. There's a big chance we hit a banner that way. I think we might actually do that to help accelerate our board state. But using this to dodge an on encounter in HB, it's only low key, if I'm not mistaken. So there's not a lot of options. Planogram to draw three, not gain three. Again, we'll see what their ice is. A lot of times you could be running also like big old biroids, and those are a bit expensive. I'm going to crack this to install three face down. So we have a jailbreak that's dead, a harbinger that's okay, and another jailbreak. Both of our multi axis jailbreaks are on the table face down. Uh, those are just gone. They're out of the game. At least I don't know if we wanted to draw them right here. So we can install something face down. I think we actually like our cards. Four face down on turn two seems like a lot. But let's just run server one here. See what this is. Can be a bloop. So it's a pulse. We're going to lose a click and we can always click through this and we'll still have a card left uh, and clicks to access. So we definitely want to trash regoliths. We're going to let this thing fire. So now we have to respect bloop. But as long as we have a heartbeat and no programs, bloop doesn't do anything besides the core damage, which we can prevent. So we'll spend a click. We access here and we can still steal or trash a pro. Uh, uh, what's it called? An agenda without taking any core. It's a jupe stud. We are OK with them with jupe stud. Jupe stud is so expensive for this deck. Now they could install advanced events and do one core damage. But the idea is that if we get a heartbeat down, that doesn't really do anything. The question is, how soon can we draw into it? We also now know they're on harmonics, which changes a lot. I don't know if they're going to be on exclusively harmonics, but again, Jupestad is just so expensive for this deck that already doesn't have a lot of money. 
So we'll see how they can uh, capitalize on that. Hedge fund though, they played two hedge funds in the early. That's pretty good. They have Planogram 2, which is also an econ card that's pretty easy to play. And a second ice there easily could be a bloop, but we just need to set up. I'm going to install a face down Reaver. It's definitely good if we're trashing our own cards. We need to find MK Ultra. We can install face down. Sure, Gamble is okay, but not necessary. A simulator gives us access to not too much. Flipping up the Reaver is like, okay, it's like a click to flip, a click to install, gaining two. Like it kind of works, but immediately we have to install this thing anyway, so maybe we don't mind. You can also discard the MK Ultra. That's probably fine as well. Um, having it locked down on the table could be a bit awkward, but blooping, like I'm, we're expecting bloop, and you don't want to MK Ultra through a bloop. We probably don't install this at all. So I think we can draw once. We just need to find our stuff, and we can maybe just dirty laundry archives. It's uh, less money than the Sure Gamble, but this card might be harder to play in a bit. And we're just going to throw out the MK Ultra. So in theory, if we need to deal with a bloop or maybe a draft or maybe even like a road turret, we can deal with it. But we just need to find our banner and then we're kind of off to the races. So banner waiting room here. Heartbeat's also super important because they could give us a, yeah, they could give us a core damage right here with, with Drip Stud. Stall advance. Again, pulse doesn't actually do anything. So if we top deck into, we have to top deck into uh, very specifically Heartbeat. If we top deck into Heartbeat, we're okay. We can actually run this. I think we do want to run this. Because if it's a bloop, it's just a core damage. If it's a wave, it doesn't matter. If it's a pulse, we do, it doesn't matter. If it's a pulse, we have to run first click. So I think we can run into a bloop. If they bloop us for a single core damage, that's still fine because we will steal an agenda, right? Maybe it's an NGO front, but I think we can just take a bloop here. Double wave. Okay, sick. So this actually sucks <laughs> because this we can't deal with. Admittedly, now if they scored the agenda, they can't res the dead, likely. But now we lost a click here. Uh, we're going to lose two more credits as well. But if we click through this, we can't click through this one, and then we will take a core damage anyways. So I think we can let this one fire. Uh, we're going to end the run. So we have two clicks left. They have six credits. So we can draw up again. A heartbeat would be sick here. It's a heartbeat. So now they cannot do us core damage at all. We can ignore their ability largely. Now, this still has text on it. We definitely want to deal with this if we can. Amakua uh, would be okay. One strength is pretty easily. But yeah, this is the hard counter. Yeah, <laughs> this one is rough. But now the Jupe's dads are useless and a lot of their ability could be useless. We can just start face checking again with no breakers. Bloop doesn't do anything right. And while Apex is a bit of a niche identity, this is probably one of the better matchups. Score out an ontological as a blank for two. Again, their economy doesn't really exist. If we hit a wave, it's kind of bad because they actually get back into the game in a meaning, uh, very meaningful way. Face down installed card. I think we can just install the Harbinger face down. And here again, the remote server, we need to find a way to get to deal it. Pawn shop is like, OK. If we had a Reaver flipped as well, it'd be actually quite good. So I do think we just install the Assimilator and then we do Pawn Shop Reaver and just start burning through our deck. It's actually kind of expensive. We could do this and this. We can draw once at least. That's actually really important. I think that's all we need. Because Amaku on one strength deals with the server. Like, it's still a bit expensive. We can spend our clicks. But our installed cards are the most important thing. So I think we can get the Amakua down. I don't think we want to show that we have the Amakua. If we show that we have the Assimilator, we drop to very low credits. I don't think we want to do that either. We also can just like reboot archives to get five more face down cards. And then like the Aesops is really good. So I think we'll install. Yeah, we will. We'll do this slowly. We're only on four credits. So if we install the Amaku, we have, again, very little economy. But that's kind of an issue with the deck. And maybe these would be better as wastelands here. Uh, but now if they do install it, like what can they score out here? Just a three, two, probably Rashida, maybe a spin doctor. So we're going to install the pawn shop face down again to run this. We can install our Amaku. We're just going to need credits. So we can flip over the pawn shop. We also could have installed the Amaku and flipped over the Amaku. That actually is technically pretty good. Maybe we want to install a different card. Because we flip the Amaku. We'll have four credits. We can actually run this. Yeah, I think we do that, actually. We haven't really gained information. Maybe we'll be able to redo this. So I think if we click this, we can do it. So I'm going to install this face down at the beginning of turn. So this will be like this, but I, we spend no money. So we get an Amaku down. Okay, and now with four credits, we can run this again. We can't trash anything, but we could potentially steal an agenda. And I feel like they have to go quick here. Uh, and then next turn we can, you know, yeah, we'll see. I think we can still do this. Let's just run server one. So here we could lose a click to save a credit. Um, saving credit actually matters because that means we can flip the Aesop's pawn shop. That being said, we can't use the Aesop's pawn shop next turn. We'll have to use it in two turns from now. So maybe that's not that important. So, oh wait, we can't even use the Amaco. <laughs> we have to run archives first. Yeah, we're at zero strength. We need to run archives just to get Amaku counter, and then we'll go in. And again, we have no clicks left, but we largely don't care. Like, Hendrik doesn't do anything. 
Uh, we unfortunately won't have the money to trash like a Maryland or Regolith, and that's kind of what they really need on this board state. So we're just hoping that they're kind of tilting and going quickly, uh, which I wouldn't call a tilt. I think they need to go quickly because they don't have a game plan against uh, this thing. So we can break for two. Again, runner loses two credits. That's cheaper to break. This one, we again break for two. If we don't trash here, we also get an Amaku counter. Let's see what this is. I think it could easily be not. It's a luminal, huge steal. Uh, we're going to suffer core damage. So we'll prevent the damage. So we can throw out a black orchestra into the bin. That means we can return it, which is great. And it's a Jupestad, which we don't care about. And now they don't have economy. They can jam in their remote server every turn. Costs four credits for us to run, which is uh, kind of a lot considering how bad our economy is. But once we get the Aesops up, and then eventually we'll get greedy and get the Reaver up too. And we're in an okay spot, but we're going to flip this next turn. All right. We'd just be happy if they don't put anything in the remote server because we can't contest it this turn. Archives Ice, that plays around Reboot too. We also have to still draw into our banner, which we're getting there, but we're kind of all set up. And we have Prey. Actually, it might have been right to Prey the Server 1 in retrospect. Um, yeah, I think that was a mistake. We definitely should have Prayed Server 1. Uh, we can still do it in the future, but... So beginning turn, we'll install that face down. We have to watch out. If they do something like um, the distributed tracing, they can trash our resources. Trashing a simulator is actually pretty powerful. So we will flip this over. Uh, we could have drawn first. We're not going to run here. We need to find a banner. That's good. We'll get a credit next turn. Oh, actually, better than clicking for a credit would have been drawing would have been also flipping the Reaver. Uh, flipping the Reaver and flipping the Pawn Shop was actually a pretty good turn because that's three credits worth of installs. And then next turn, we would have got credits. So we definitely should have flipped the Reaver because we're going to start trashing our stuff consistently. That being said, if we trash too much stuff, we just won't have stuff to feed to um, the Heartbeat. But third hedge fund, good spot. Did we install a face down? I don't think we do. I think we like our cards. So we'll do Pawn Shop first. We'll Pawn the Jailbreak. We don't want to install face down. Let's start here. Get some cards and credits. Draw first. There's the banner. We need to get that face down at the beginning of next turn. Now it won't do anything that turn, unfortunately, because it won't be resed when your turn starts, so you can't trigger it. We could run here again for four. Uh, at this point, they've only gone through four agenda points. So we don't know exactly what their ice suite is, but or sorry, agenda suite is, but a lot of these um Thule decks are playing a lot of small agendas, which is really hard for them to score out. I think we just keep deuces in through our deck. And then we probably flip the reaver. We do definitely want to get land the reboot, but I think we do it next turn. Uh, after we like maybe ban our archives if we see what this is. Because if it's a Maryland, we're fine. That's our multi-axis. We have a Reaver here, but I think it's just better to flip this Reaver. So flip up this. So now we have our suite. And we're kind of good to go. Let's see what they score out here. Again, it'd have to be a 3-2, and this is probably the only good 3-2 in the list, unless they're also on um, Themeless, which they could easily be. And we can just keep crashing our stuff to deal with the core damage. So third ice there seems pretty good. Maybe they can do advance advance. Again, I don't exactly know what their ice suite is. Some of them I've seen are running things like um, superconducting hub, which again, if they score that out, we're totally fine. But no advance there. Maybe it's a mana garment they're most of Maybe a Hendrick. I think we're fine with both of those. So take clicks. Do we want to pawn something for credits? I feel like we probably don't want more credits. Maybe actually we can. Um, we'll start. In theory, we should pawn shop first because we draw a card. It gives us information. Let's pawn one more. But after that point, we might just stop. So upon that, we have overclock in this list. I didn't realize that. So we'll install the bankar face down. This is our win condition, you mind you, the waken plant. Uh, so we need to get this down and start running HQ, but we just don't have enough installed cards face down. Uh, if their ice suite is potentially like a bloop on HQ, that's pretty dangerous. So we need to flip the bankar. So we definitely will flip the bankar. I don't know how greedy it is to have two reavers, but we need to run archives and like reboot to reset everything relatively soon. Uh, okay, so here. Getting this down, I think we can just take the meat damage. The only thing I really care, oh, actually we care about these two. So we can draw once, I reckon. Second heartbeat doesn't really matter. We can install a face down. We'll flip the banner. Whoops, I clicked on the heartbeat instead of the simulator. So we flip the banner. We still have one click left. We could probably install the wake implant. If it hits the reboot, we're in a bad spot. But we have three reboots. A few harbingers are down. So now we just need to get stuff on the table. So just installing anything is probably worth it because we can just trash it. The question is like, we want to install the cheapest stuff. We'll install this. This maybe pressures HQ a bit, prevent any of the damage. Oh, let's just hope it doesn't hit the reboot. That's good enough. Perfect. And now we're in a good spot. So now we want to run HQ. We get power counters on this thing and then we can convert those into R&D multi-axis. Again, we did add teal jailbreaks, card and server one. I do think we can't deal with upgrades very well. So that's probably a mana garden, which is a problem. So I think we have to ban our archives this turn. Uh, it's not automated. So we're going to stop using the pawn shop. I think we're good. So we're going to apex install this. Pawn shop. We don't need to pawn anything. We have enough money, I think. Banner on archives. Banner is not automated, but at the start of your turn, you call a server. And then whenever the first ice encountered fires, the subroutines are just net damage subroutines. 
So there's not much we're expecting more than three separate chains. It doesn't work. It doesn't work yet, but it's pretty easy. Yeah, okay, so we're gonna reboot archives. So that run is successful. We just install five cards face down. So we'll see if they res here on 11 credits. Again, if they want to score out of 4-2, they're going to need three credits. No further action. So Banner is wasted potentially, but maybe they didn't res because of that. And now we can install five cards face down. So this gives us our pawn shop engine. It gives us our card draw engine, but we just want things face down. Uh, so I'm going to leave the breakers in there. I'm just going to get other cards face down, like just about anything. Not that we can recur these any other way, but if we leave our breakers in there, we have access to them. Uh, if we need to run and actually break something in a panic. So now we have all these face down cards. We can consider running HQ, but if it's actual real ice, it is going to connect with us, which is a problem. Um, mind you, we can deal with, it's not very good that we can deal with those. We do want a dream net that will help us a lot. The question is whether we want to run this server. With Amaku on one, it's only the outermost ice that matters. So maybe we got greedy and we could have just ban banard the outer ice here. We still have to deal with the mana garden, but I think we want to just keep our central pressure up. So let's just draw. Another reboot again, pretty greedy, but we could do it. Actually, we probably do it this turn, right? Yeah, we just do it this turn. Banner is still online. Yeah, why not? So now we have a lot of hit points. So we're never going to take core damage. And again, if we don't have an Amaku, the bloop just has one subroutine that matters. That being said, we also have the Reaver. But this is five more cards. So one, two, three, four. And I think we're less likely to need our MK Ultra in a pinch. Like it can deal with Drafter, maybe. Black Orchestra technically deals with these. I think the Black Orchestra were less necessary to use. I just don't think we're going to MK Ultra a bloop. I think MK Ultra a drafter is pretty important. So we'll just pawn it next turn. So it's not going to be on the table for very long. But we have all these installed cards. And we're not an Apocalypse deck, if that isn't obvious. So now they score out another Ontological, which is just another dead 4-2. But they're on game point now, which really matters. And now we just start slamming HQ. All right. Start a turn. I don't think we need to install anything face down. We'll pawn shop the orchestra for three credits and a card. We have all these praise and they're pretty easy to use. Banner on HQ. And now we run HQ. We've seen two, four, five, six points so far. Sorry, we're so zoomed out. But we, now we get our Amaku up. And it's a bit hard. Now we still have breakers in the bin. Let's see if they res here. It's an echo. We can pay one credit to get through this instead of taking a damage. And then we can just go and pray back through it. I think that's totally fine. Uh, how greedy are we about keeping our cards? We'll just break for one. Then we're going to go and trash that. And then HQ is wide open, which is so good with Wake. Ooh, Anemone. That's not going to do anything either. But now with Prey, we break it. And now we're just going to charge up the Waken plan so quickly. This is how we're going to try and win the game. And I think we lost our Mad Dash already. I think it's somewhere face down here on the table. No, it's not. We still have a Mad Dash, which is really good with the Waken plan. So this we're also going to break for one. We're going to keep our cards installed. This might be a bit greedy. And now that we passed it, we can trash zero cards because it's zero strength. And we just open up HQ entirely. Now, if they chop deck an agenda, it's going to go straight into the remote server, which is, you know, hard. Hell of a gow. All right, we're just going to suffer a core damage, which of course we're going to prevent. We're going to trash. We don't have any breakers, so we're going to just trash like an overclock, I guess. We're just going to load up on HQ. We're hopefully going to... Woo! This is rough that we can just absolutely play around their ability. So we'll prevent one. We'll just keep going in. We're on game point. And now, next turn, we can run our idea. We can see four cards. It's a Spin Doctor. We'll trash that for two. They have two cards in HQ. They could be on game point if they have a 5-3, but they need to do install advance advance, which they largely can't afford. Like, they can't afford the mana garment in the remote server. If they do that or if they res it, I mean, like, we're in an okay spot. And the question is now with the, uh, unfortunately, we stole in trash all the time. So the Amaku is that not, or sorry, it's not big enough because otherwise we'd run R&D. But we might have to ban our R&D. If they put something in server one, we actually could consider bannering server one. Yeah, they're going R&D. So we'll ban our R&D. We just want to do our Aesops first. So we'll Aesops, uh, the Har Harbinger, I guess. Choose a card face down. We might as well install that. Uh, banner on R&D. And now we just want to load on HQ. And then if this is at five strength, there's nothing in the deck I think we'd have to worry about on R&D. So we'll run HQ. I wish we had a Dream Net here. It would be a card and a credit. There's a ganked. <laughs> I love it. So they're probably playing some meaner ice. If we trash that, though, uh, we are in an awkward, awkward spot. I guess we do trash that. We just don't get Amaku counters. We still, again, the Waken plan keeps getting charged. Overrider, whoa. This deck is cool. Elevagao, we'll suffer the core. We'll prevent one of them. We can also suffer a core at this point. Like, it doesn't matter that much. We've seen three ontologicals. Maybe actually getting the second reaver down at some point is correct, because we're going to be drawing twice a turn. Like, this does replace itself. But I think we're in an okay spot. Do we know the last card in HQ? We don't. Let's find out what it is. It's an echo. Okay. That's not a very good res. 
into um, an Amaku, unfortunately. But now they're still on five credits. They have an Echo and an Unknown card in hand. And we are set up. <laughs> this rig is really goofy. This honestly doesn't feel that bad. Like, it's a bit slow. And I think, like, Thule is quite slow itself. Like, they have to struggle with economy, let alone all the stuff they want to do. So this is a really good matchup. Obviously, Heartbeat is a bit unfair. But with five credits, they largely can't res two ice here. Maybe they can. Okay, so running HQ. If they iced up HQ, it has to do with the Waken plant. But on top of that, like, I don't know. I think at three strength, we consider running R&D. We'll see. If they res something big here, we might ban our. So we'll, we'll pawn shop just to get through our deck. Jailbreak's gone. Dirty Laundry. Choose a card face down. I don't think we do. Maybe we do the Reaver. I feel like installing the Reaver is probably worth it. Maybe it's a bit greedy. We have 16 cards left in our stack. Yeah, it's probably worth doing. Uh, Banner on HQ. We want to open HQ up. We do think it's the Echo, which actually for that reason, we probably should put on R&D. The problem is like we can't face check into the Echo and bounce, right? Because it does net damage now because of Banner. That's Anemone. Sick. So they can throw out a card here, which maybe like saves an agenda, but we can just prevent all this damage. Prevent any of the two net damage. Uh, yeah, okay. Get rid of a heartbeat. Get rid of a deuces. Or sorry, that was a harbinger. Tuner counter ice. <laughs> uh, blank banner. So this is the same subroutine. We can also MK Ultra through this if we want to save a card. Uh, we can also, to some extent, just take the damage again. Would love a dream net here to make sure we can accelerate through our deck. We also could have put the Reaver down first, and that's probably correct. Now this card could be the echo. If it's if it is, they just discarded an unknown card. I think we know there's an anemone here, right? Um, okay, so we're gonna just break that for one though, actually. Never mind. We definitely don't want to MK Ultra that. So we'll see what we see. It's an echo. So they threw out an unknown card in archives. That's kind of interesting. Now with three credits, they could res a bloop. That's the one thing that we can't deal with. So we might want to respect that to some extent. Uh, because bloop is five strength. So I think we will respect that. There's a dream net. Either we install this for three or we get it flipped. I think we just run HQ to get another counter. I think we dirty laundry HQ just to get another charge on Amakua, and then we can consider running archives. Once this is at five, they could consider purging. Um, we still are able to deal with the anemone. Putting on the dream net there didn't actually matter because we've already made a successful run, so it wouldn't have triggered, but that's definitely something we want to get down. Um, I think here we can just run archives. Uh, we have to run watch out for nightmare archives, but no, we just take the core damage, so whatever. Let's see what card they threw at. Actually, when we're on five strength there, we probably should have ran R&D and just like cashed out. I don't know why we're running archives here. So they have a bloop in hand. Uh, this we break for one. But they're down to one credit, right? Oh, it's a send a message. Okay. Good game. That's the Apex deck. It's really kind of like wild. Like the engine's actually quite good. Obviously playing around core damage or not having to is a huge deal. Yeah. Just, <laughs> just a bit. For every Apex matchup though, there's an S01. For what's worth, Heartbeat's like a really niche card, but uh, this was, it almost went well. So during a meta, we're just having unconditional damage prevention was the most important thing you could do for three influence. Like even if it trash your board, it cheers you too. All right, we're trying to simulate Banner. Uh, we're playing in standard. We're against uh, Doomrat on Asa. Uh, I don't know how Asa has changed really with the new um, Parhelion. A lot of the support was for, for core damage, right? I think one of the biggest cards they might have got is Gaslight, so you can pull specifically into your fully operationals consistently and put cards and remote servers on the same uh, uh, on tempo. On top of that, in theory, uh, the deck has access now to um, Jupestat if you want to like do core damage with like a 2-1 from hand. This hand's like only good enough because it has an assimilator and we have a good card draw. Um, we definitely need to get a simulator down and then we need to get a banner down. Amaku is also massively important. We can keep this hand. It's not the best, but like I think we can mulligan into worse than this. We are playing Apex. Again, we have a weird engine. This is Baram's deck, and it's been really fun so far. It's a bit clumsy and a bit fiddly, and maybe against the faster decks, uh, it just can't keep up. We also struggle to deal with unfair upgrades, things like Manic Arm Skunk Works and like Anoetic. We just can't deal with it. Like we could maybe slot pinholes, but it's, again, it's quite difficult. If you're not familiar with Asa, they get to do a double install for a single click. Here they overinstalled. So it looks like they installed an agenda and then put a spin doctor on top of it and trashed it. After a mulligan, too. So they probably have a really ugly opening. That's a really cool play. Uh, they got a second card in their remote server. We're assuming that's often like a Tranquility, maybe a uh, Nico or probably more often a Marilyn. Installing something face down here. I actually don't want to. Um, the praise are kind of good. Like if we destroy their ice, they don't have ice and that turns off the Asa ability or the fully operational ability. So we're going to just go and check archives. Uh, we could have considered deuces in first to see stuff, but we're pretty sure they overinstalled with the Spin Doctor. Otherwise that play makes no sense. And then we'll start there. So draw two. Game theory, we have a reboot. So if we just get five cards in archives, we can set up pretty aggressively. Assimilator early is good. Uh, they drew up with the Spin Doctor and discarded two. So I don't think there's anything in, in, in hand. 
If anything, we can consider running this and checking server two. And if it's a tranquility, we can afford to destroy it. It's a Maryland. I think we can afford to destroy that. Even just letting them have cards that are going to be in remote servers is pretty important. While we don't have a very robust economy, if they can't fully operational um, for efficiently, which is much harder if they don't have stuff iced up, double install. Okay, probably a Managarm, maybe a Tranquility. We're going to start here. Install something face down. I still don't think we do. Let's start with the deuces, draw two, gain three. We have a dream net. To some extent, it's actually okay to ins install this simulator, install this face down, and then flip it. Because uh, we're going to install this anyways, this is kind of akin to uh, flipping it and gaining three credits for the same click. So while that feels a bit awkward, here running HQ is probably okay, but I think we want to draw once more. We definitely need to get an assimilator. I just wonder if just putting the dream net down and running is a bit better. And then we don't have to deal with the simulator this soon in the game. I think that's probably okay. If we run, we have to discard though. We can discard the hunting grounds. Hunting grounds is actually okay because the master house for banner. Not that the ability on it matters, it's the install the top three cards thing that matters. So we're going to have to discard a card here. There's a fully operational. Again, this is the power card that is uh, a, the huge crux of this deck. We can discard a card here. So we have the Harbingers. They're okay. Getting them installed down as face down cards of trash, but we don't really need face down cards of trash on this board state. Uh, so I think we can install Reaver next turn and then pop the Hunting Grounds to draw technically kind of like four cards. If we find a Banhar or a Pawn Shop, we're in a good spot. Second Spin Doctor on top of an upgrade. They don't have a really explosive opening. They're struggling for the board. But they definitely want to ice up everything to some extent. It's really hard for Asa to do that. Again, Asa decks have good draw, but they don't run a lot of ice a lot of times. They run fewer than some of the other PDA decks. Maybe a bit uh, the same, but it's not a lot. Spin Doctor, just getting trashed, icing that up. Looks like an agenda. Now, if we face check here, Fairchild 3, we can deal with icing up R&D. Other stuff might be a bit tricky. I don't want to install a face down card here. So we can install both of these. That got, drops us down. We could probably just run HQ first and see what we hit. If we run here first click, if it's a drafter, it's pretty bad. And that's probably why they trashed the spin doctor, but it won't keep us out. And if it's a mana garm, I don't know if we're ready to deal with it. Let's just try and build into our, what our engine is. There's a fully op and we have awaken plants, which is really quite good. So install this. We can install this. We can crack it on their turn. Not that we're going to trash something on our turn. And I think we actually could just reboot for tempo. Yeah, I think we might just reboot for tempo. This allows us to install five things, which is everything we have. So now we have all the trashables to set up for Prey, let alone our uh, Banner plus Heartbeat engine. We need a draw to Heartbeat as well. So we'll crack this on their turn. Let's install three face down. Seamless launch. Very good. Let's see what they get as an agenda. Offworld would be not amazing for us. I feel like an ADT uh, that gets them an installed in Res Dice would actually be pretty good. Let's track, crack this to install three face down. Draws us a card. We got a Heartbeat on the table, a Sure Gamble, and a Hunting Grounds. So we can definitely flip up the Heartbeat if we need to. I think here we have a lot of stuff to install. I think we have to get down this simulator because we don't want to lose it. We need to get down the wake implant so we have pressure. But that means we sure gamble first. So we do this and we're going to lose the prey. That's fine. Let's draw a card and get some credit. Get some pressure on. It's always too fully operational. But now they have dice up HQ. Now the remote server again, we're not coming for it just yet. We just don't have our breakers yet. We found no breakers, no Amakua, none of our bin breakers. But on top of that, we don't have a banner. The best thing we have here is the heartbeat. Uh, that's uh, obviously okay. It's part of our engine, but it's not an important part of our engine. Like we don't need it up front. Our credits are also kind of falling apart. They just drew card in server three, and they might just try and score out before the central pressure actually converts. And we're not very good at dealing with upgrades, which is a problem. Fully operational. It echoes twice. So they gained two and then gained two. So they just played that to gain three credits, which is good enough. Take clicks. I think we can install this face down, but we probably don't need to. Run HQ. Maybe we can lock the top of the deck. Here we're just doing this for the card and the credit. It's going to be a spin doctor. Probably can trash that. We found our banner, which is great. We will be set up now in two turns, which is pretty rough. Uh, but we now have our engine. The question is if we trash this. Maybe we do. It's just we don't have a good economy now. Because we're going to have to flip this. We're going to flip the heartbeat. I think here we consider flipping the heartbeat. We can draw once. We have a prey. That helps. Maybe we can open up R&D. But we can consider either running HQ again or flipping the heartbeat. Flipping the heartbeat seems important, but not exactly this turn. Installing this face down and actually flipping it is like better than installing it because our economy just isn't there, which is wild. And maybe that's actually worth doing to go through our deck a bit faster. So we have probably, you know, nothing in HQ, maybe a second fully operational. I don't think we need to flip the heartbeat this turn because we can't use the banner this turn. It's an Ikwa. Oh, wow. Great. We'll take it. So that's the other 5 3. We want to make sure that we have a click and two credits. So last click wouldn't have made sense, but we are now on. The board, Seamus Launch was the other card in their hand. Illuminal, it seems like it is. Nope. 
Vitruvius with a counter. So that means they can pull back their fully operationals, let alone their spin doctors, let alone their seamless launches. So now anything in the remote server, even install advanced pressures of 5.3. So we're in an awkward spot. Uh, this is really fast and we're not a very fast deck. So maybe we have to close the game by waking and planning and locking R&D. I think that's our way out. But they can always get, um, what's it called? They can always get a, a spin doctor and, and shuffle. So we'll start here by running HQ. We got an echo, surprising to see that. We deal with that one relatively well. Uh, we have prey to trash it if we get through it. We're definitely gonna need to fr uh, flip our uh, bank art. To some extent, we're gonna need to flip our heartbeat, but we can just kind of take damage with this hand. Even flipping like the hunting grounds is not the worst because it's technically a card draw. We definitely need to flip the mana. That's the only way we get around the non-virtual because we didn't install it. But I think flipping the hunting grounds isn't the worst. We can't do it this turn, but if we flip it, we could crack it and it gets us like technically a card draw because of the reaver if we do it on their turn and three more. So maybe we could have done that besides running. If we run back, what do we know? We know an echo in hand and I think that's all we know. Unless there's another fully up and of course, obviously there's an upgrade there. It's either draw or credit. Echo could end up on R&D. I think we need to draw for an actual breaker because if they double ice R&D, the banner doesn't deal with it. Okay. Let's see what they do here. Again, technical game point draw. So they just drew two that turn. We know Echo and that's it. Suspect maybe another fully operational. But they would probably play that to draw. Maybe they'd set up another server. Okay, if they advance that once, it's on game point. 10 credits on an upgrade. Do we contest the remote server? Ice on HQ is pretty good. So one of these is likely the Echo. Now they would need a seamless launch in hand to score out of 5-3 to win the game. So start a turn, take clicks. I think we will install this face down. Uh, Banner is not automated. Banner on R&D. So I think we can just flip the uh, heartbeat and go on R&D. So we'll flip. It's a heartbeat. And we'll just run R&D. Again, the subroutines here are just damage subroutines, which we can prevent. It's just a wave. This allows them to draw a card, which an ice, mind you. So that actually makes technically more agendas in R&D, increases the density. They got a bloop, which... Uh, we deal with that relatively well. If we just trash the Reaver, it's only one subroutine, um, which is pretty good for us. So there's only one net damage subroutine on that. That's what it's going to be. So we're going to do take net N. Take net one. Uh, we're going to trash. It doesn't really matter what we trash. Uh, probably want to do an event more than anything. We have to prevent it with the heartbeat. Uh, that's it. We're through. Breed server. We're going to access all the cards. We have a mad dash too. We have clicks and credits left for Ikua. So it's a pulse off the top. A wave off the next pulse <laughs> and then a wave. Oh man, four harmonics in a row. That's so wild. And it gives us an idea what could be in the remote server. So we have to watch out. There was pulse wave echo wave. No, it was just pulses and waves, right? I don't know if we saw an echo there. All the harmonics eyes kind of blend together in my mind, which is a bit tricky. Okay, so we still don't have a breaker. Um, hmm. They have a bloop in hand and an unknown card. And I think we can consider bannering R&D, but like it only, or sorry, server three, but it only deals with one unknown ice. So unfortunately, they have three draws in a row. So our awaken plant's not going to get there. Uh, beans. We can't flip anything. So it's either draw or credit. I think we can consider a draw here. We need the money for mana garm, if anything. So maybe we just take the money. It's a Rashida. Okay, so they're going to draw all of their ice. So this opens up the top of R&D, but they've just drawn four harmonic ice in a row. Uh, whatever that is. Oops, all harmonics. <laughs> now that's really good. Like triple icing and double icing actually plays very heavily. It plays really well around um, uh, Banhar because Banhar is only the outermost. Uh, so that's a problem. Now they drew an unknown. Again, they also have, they have a hedge fund. We know that they have five ice in hand and that's could easily be the bloop and then something behind it. Now the bloop again, we can just left fire. It just as a core damage and trashes our reaver, which is very acceptable. Take clicks. Let's we'll all this face down. I wonder if actually, yeah, we could maybe consider flipping the hunting grounds. We'll ban our HQ. We just need to get charges on our waking plant. Oh, wait. I, wow. I uh, face down the wrong card. Yeah, we meant to face down uh, the simulator. We definitely want, don't want to face down that. So start a turn. We're going to face down the assimilator. This obviously we want to play. Face down events don't really do anything. So still an HQ. Uh, and I think we just go there. Um, the other options we can flip, I think we'll flip the hunting grounds after this run, but we'll go HQ. Let's see if they res here. It's a bloop. Okay, so it's a it's a big one. Uh, but I think we can just let the subroutine fire and just prevent one core damage. Like if we don't have installed programs, this does very little against this deck, which is really sick. So 
Uh, unfortunately, actually, all the subroutines do fire because we have replaced them. So the worst thing we did is ban our HQ. If we ban our R&D, this would be easy. But unfortunately, this is actually three net damage because it's ban art. But yeah, now we just don't ban our HQ anymore. So take net three because this replaces the subroutines. We'd actually not want to at this point. So we're going to prevent the three damage. We'll prevent uh, we deuces. We draw a card. Uh, sure gamble. And a dirty laundry. Reach server. It's a pulse. No surprise. We have a paperclip in the bin. So here we can install the harbinger, which is two cards. Um, we also just go through this now. We can just let this fire. While we know HQ is at least like, we know there's two non-ice there. I think if they had a, uh, an agenda, they would jam in their remote server. But it's all about just charging the waking plant. The other option is like just flipping the hunting grounds. I think we flip the hunting grounds and just run back. Yeah, yeah, probably. And we just trash this. The other option is install the Harbinger. So the hunting grounds is two clicks for three installs. This is one click for two installs. That's actually probably better. And banner is only the first time. So we can just let the fire. Like while bloop is good, uh, if we don't have programs. Oh, we install the Harbinger into this thing. Wait, wait a second. Oh, actually, no, I can trash it. Never mind. It's fine. Because I can just trash it to this thing. Works out. And then they can trash the two programs. So the Reaver's gone, and we're through. And this is, again, I don't think there's going to be cards in here that we want to steal. It's just to, mo to get the wake-up implants. Because in theory, we can mad dash in and win uh, off of a single run. Uh, the problem is how to get through all this stuff. Because it's actually going to be quite difficult. We might need the paperclip, which means we need credits. Uh, but we can't really straight ban our through here. Maybe with the if it's a bl another bloop there, we can. Taking one core damage is a bit risky. Pulse. Okay, cool. So, hey, we've loaded up the wake. The question is maybe we can get them poor enough um, on credits that we can run R&D. They can't res most. Again, if they're on, we saw what? We saw pulses from HQ. They also, of course, have access to Vitruvius, which can just be a spin doctor. It can just be a hedge fund. But I think you'll probably get more value from uh, pulling back a fully operational. Yeah, especially here. Now the fully operational is a uh, five credit play. What is that? We don't know. It's tricky here. I do think we can ban our R&D and see how it goes. We can install the paperclip face down. Again, we have no reavers, so we're not having a big card draw engine. It's just the dream net. And dream net's really good. Like running archives for a card and credit, it's kind of sick. If we had an Amaku, it'd be good, but then we have to deal with the bloops. Uh, ban our R&D. Okay. Do we just mad dash straight in? I don't think we do. Now, once we figure out what this ice is, we can use the wake implant after. All right, I think we can run R&D just straight in. Again, we might lose clicks to pulses. Again, they only have 11 credits. This is probably like a Maryland, maybe an econ card. So not resin here. Let's put the pressure on again. If it's another bloop, you have to de-res this bloop. So that's really ugly. But I think we saw echoes and waves and stuff like that. Wow, they actually de-res another bloop. This can't be a great res, right? So it's just, oh, it's three net damage. It's actually not that bad. Man, Benar is actually <laughs> doing work. So take N. Take uh, net three. Yeah, we have to fire this. So we're going to trash uh, the events generally go first. Do we have any? We'll trash the paperclip. We'll trash. Uh, the hunting ground is actually worth flipping at some point. The harbinger and we'll trash. The harbinger is probably not worth flipping. Assimilator. We're running out of cards. Now, if there's an echo here, like we just can't get through it. It's a wave. Okay, that's fine. That actually technically thins their deck out. But now we can access four cards. It's a Fairchild 3. That's a hard one to deal with. And now they can res here. We could have jacked out and actually ran HQ after because then they have to de-res this bloop to res this bloop. And like, we're still okay. If they de-res this to res that bloop, we're, we're fine. So we're going to let that fire. We have no real option here. While we don't have a mad dash, if we steal an Ikoa, we can always ignore the Ikoa and we can just run back. Now, mind you, if that happens, the wave doesn't shuffle anymore. So we can just breach. Let's see a couple. Pulse, bloop, border, fully operational. Shit. Well, the access is not there. We're just not getting there. We got a card and a credit, of course. I do think we flip the hunting grounds just to get more cards on the table. It's the most cards we can get for a single click. I don't know what server four is. We also know they're not drawing agendas. Hmm. So this might be a bit of a longer game, but this is like a hard suite. It's an interesting suite to play around. So what do we know? <laughs> um, man, how do we get around this? Like we can burst draw. I did not remember well enough what they're drawing into. I think it was two ice and then a border control and then a, a fully operational, right? So I do think we just flip with the simulator to get down the hunting grounds. Now there's no on encounters with this ice. Like all this stuff is win res as additional cost to res when you res. So this is just three more cards that we can get access to. Uh, we have mad dashes. I think we just need to charge HQ. So we'll just run HQ. 
Now we could like pray, but we have to trash cards. We want to draw into um, what's it called? A reboot. We have two more reboots, and getting a reboot face down on this would kind of suck, but whatever. We know they have a fair child in here, but we just need to get wake implant charges. So like maybe they res here for three and de-res a wave. But yeah, the bloops don't matter if you don't have programs. Especially if, well, as long as you can prevent core damage. No further action. Okay, sick. Breach is a fair child. That's the one card we knew. I think we also know pulse is in there. Let's see, it's just a Maryland. That's not credit positive this turn, but eventually we might want to deal with it. Again, they probably have a lot of ice to res on server three. They just drew, so they drew two ice. I think next is a border control and next is a fully op. Could be the Fairchild. I think we don't ban our HQ. Banner's a uh, optional too, which is kind of cool. Oh, hold on, we should do this. So it's a Reaver, a uh, Pawn Shop, and an MK Ultra. Very cool that we have a Pawn Shop. It's obviously a lot better with Reaver, and I don't think we're going to really need credits. So we just need cards installed, and we still have two reboots in 16. So I think we might just run Archives. Uh, we know the next two cards on the deck are not agendas, so it's all about charging HQ. If it's a Fairchild 3, we just want to run early. Three net damage is actually good for a Fairchild 3. If we overclock two, well, the subroutines will be rough. I, do, I think we run HQ here for sure. We just need to charge up the wake. Do we install something face down? I think we could consider it. They're playing around Prey pretty well. I don't think we put the Reaver ever on the table. Okay. Hmm. We ban our HQ and they just don't res the Fairchild 3. It's like really bad for us. And then we have to hit the, the bloop. I think we're fine with that. We could also just like ban our the Maryland. I wonder how much their money matters. I think we could ban our the Maryland and just like overclock it. Think. <laughs> so maybe we just like run HQ. If they res a Fairchild 3, I think we're totally fine with it. We can just click through it and then this doesn't matter. And that gets us a run a turn, which is just good enough. Uh, that's probably good enough. I think we just run HQ. And then if they don't raise the Fairchild 3, we can banner that. We want them to spend 6 on the Fairchild 3. I think that's the most important thing. Yeah, yeah, confirm. I just want to make sure, again, banner is not automated yet. So we just need to make sure our opponent knows. Let's just go HQ. Let's see if they raise the Fairchild here. Again, the bloop, not very good res. It just is one card for us. And getting our MK Ultra actually trashed would be good. Again, it's stopping us from playing Reaver, which is great, but we're just getting the value off DreamNet. All right, Pulse. Okay, so that actually fires. Um, this is not the Fairchild 3. So we're going to lose 3, because they have 3 harmonics. Uh, we're going to end the run there. Here we're just going to overclock server this server. Server 4, now this is our Bannard server. We have the overclock credits. Funny enough, overclocking HQ would have been okay, but then maybe they don't res. Now this thing is a bit annoying. This is, it gives us a good target though. So now if we ban our HQ, it's great. It's a wave. They can pull a card here. Now this shuffles R&D. So they're not going to draw the border control. They're going to draw an echo instead. So this is a subroutine, which is a net damage. So we'll take net N. So we're going to go trash uh, using this. We're going to go trash our MK Ultra, which is nice to have access to that if we need it in a pinch. But if it's just bloops, no. Gets a card in credit. Pay three. Okay, they can shuffle the two, and now that means also they wouldn't have drawn the border control. Now we only have three credits. Now they only have also three. We can run this. They will gain three credits off the wave. We can, in theory, jailbreak. Now we don't want to do that last click because of the Ikua. So we might just want to set up a turn. We can't really flip anything here. We could draw again. We have two reboots. Reboots would kind of really power us on. Uh, we also have dirty laundries, which would be good. So thinking here what we want to do. Uh, next turn, we probably just pray HQ with the banner. That means we can destroy this and get accesses. If they jam in the remote server, that's where it's difficult, but they have to spend some time, some turns on credits. It's a bit difficult with seamless launch. If they have one in hand, they can actually never advance a 5-3 on credits and be fine. So I think we draw. We want a dirty laundry here. Yeah, that's sick. Yo, Bo. <laughs> I'm trying to do a quick video. This deck is sick. This is Ba and chat. This is their deck. Simulation reset to trash their whole hand. So cool to see this in HP. This card's so good. And then they can shuffle back some stuff and draw. So they're shuffling back just the best stuff. Spin Doctor, Spin Doctor, Seamless, Fully Operational, Seamless. Now on top of that, in some cases, while they still have all these face down cards, uh, they don't have as much access to Vitruvius. They could have thrown out equally car equally good cards, but yeah. Did you cut the Aesops instead of Trooper? Uh, yes. I'm also on Deuces and, ooh, Fully Operational. I'm also on Deuces and uh, Jailbreak. Okay, so they got rid of their whole hand, they drew a new hand, they jammed it to server three. And in theory here, if they have a fully operational hand, which they put all the fully operationals back in the deck, uh, we're in a bad spot. I don't want to say mad dash, dude. We added mad dash, but we want to win off that. So can we win off of R&D? We'd have to ban our R&D. I think we can do it. I don't think we can deal with server three. The question is, how do we do that? We can maybe jailbreak archives, get a lot of money. 
Uh, we can install something face down again. I think we might not need the praise, but we can see a lot of cards. The question is whether we jailbreak or whether we mad dash. If we jailbreak, we see three cards. We went off the one Vitruvius. I think the deck could be on two Vitruvius and that could close the game off. But I don't know if we can deal with server three. They're only in five credits. So there's not that much they can res. Now, I don't think we want to ban our R&D. Now, if it's a wave, actually, if it's an echo, it's a bad thing. So I do think we have to. I think we're going to ban our R&D. Do we install a face down card? I think we can get rid of a prey. Banner on R&D. Huh. Okay. So we can check archives. I don't know if they're on Nightmare Archives. We can prevent that. Uh, we can Dirty Laundry Archives to draw a card here. Again, going HQ would be kind of nice. In terms of breakers, we have actually have access to two breakers, a Fractor and um, a Killer, but we don't have a lot of money. So I'm double check that Banner on R&D is good. And then we might just slam R&D. We can always run through the pulse. We know that this is a, like, okay, so we actually could get another charge here. So we consider just like dirty laundering HQ. So we could ban her on HQ. We could take the net damage here. We know this is a, a bloop. If they res the bloop, it's like totally fine. And then that gives us a charge on the wake implant. That's pretty good. Well, did we just commit to ban our ID? We did. The problem is that like if they res nice here, we can't get through it. And so this we can definitely get through. So we can always like dirty laundry uh, the pulse. We would uh, lose a click. So then we'd be on two clicks and then we just run R&D. I think that's actually fine. I, I think we just dirty laundry HQ. They drew a bunch of cards. We can also conceal jailbreaking it, but I think we just dirty laundry HQ. And then last click we, or second click we run R&D because we want to make sure that we have Ikua. So we're going to have one credit to, credit to lose. So not that big of a subroutine. Uh, we'll spend a click. We know this is a bloop, which again, we're totally fine with the bloop. Not rezzing. Okay. So we get a charge here. We get a card and we get five cards. Seamless. Terrifying. Okay, well, we do have the reboot, which is great. I think we just smash R&D with a Mad Dash. And we have a chance of winning. We're going to see four cards. We have a click left so we can deal with Ikua. Let's go. And we can definitely get through all this ice. Ooh, this could be a game. <laughs> this could be a game of Netrunner. Now, the outermost is something that we can deal with the net damage. So even there is an Echo, but this one's going to be take three net because it is Banard. It's all MK Ultra. Uh, no, thank you. Uh, take net three. So let's we'll start trashing stuff. Uh, let's get rid of. Uh, the, uh, yeah, we'll prevent the Aesops is worth keeping the things that we would not flip. So we're not going to flip a Reaver anytime soon. We're not going to flip a Harbinger anytime soon. And we're well, actually flipping the Harbinger isn't the worst. It is technically hit points. This fires. This just gives them three credits. Not bad. It doesn't let them shuffle their deck. I wonder if we actually should have jailbreaked HQ. We definitely need two credits when we access. So maybe that fires. Let's go. Seamless. Fully. No. One more. Oh, no. Prevent any of the damage. Oh, no. Where are the agendas? <laughs> prevent the damage. I don't think we do. Well, actually, preventing the re uh, protecting the reboot's worth it. So we'll trash the Aesops. Ugh. Okay, we're not out. We definitely just reboot archives and reset. We also get an access here. Like, the agendas could be here. Up to five. This replaces the axis. It replaces the flip too. Okay. So we get to install five cards. Uh, what cards we pick here don't really matter. We can always flip the hunting ground, which is more cards. So I think we're going to consider that. Uh, we want to leave our breakers in the bin. I guess these are kind of worth flipping. Uh, I don't know where the agendas are. But we're set up. We just saw the next four cards. It's a Rashida. They're going to draw through them. We literally don't know where the agendas are. Oh, no. Doom Rat drawing up. Okay, so they just drew four there. So they just broke a lock. Top of R&D is entirely unknown. We emptied, unfortunately, our, uh, our wake up, our wake implant, excuse me. That was a card from HQ. That's another card. That's probably the tranquility, right? And there's a fully op. They can draw heavily with this. They're, they're going to draw two. So that's two unknown cards in HQ. Again, we can just let this fire. We're going to jailbreak HQ for sure. And then we can run R&D probably. Res the tranquility. So we know that's probably a defensive upgrade. That's Tranquility. And that's a card on there. Again, we know they have two Seamus launch, so we can just lose to this. Oh, this is a really important turn here. Do we need to install a face down? We have one, two, three, four, five. And mind you, on the last turn, we can just start ripping up our own board. Like, these don't matter on the last turn. So I don't think we need to install here, something here. Okay, okay. Last turn, huh? Uh, hmm. Bankar on, I think R&D is like technically the best because we can deal with the outermost. I think we just basically jailbreak HQ, ban our R&D, call it a day. Maybe check archives. 
I don't know if there's a spin doctor, but so we'll do ban our R&D. So we just jailbreak HQ, that should draw us two cards. It'll cost us two clicks, that we just run R&D once, and then check archives. It's the best we have. All good? <laughs> cool, cool, cool. All right, let's go. Continue encounter. We're just going to let that fire. Again, we need to make sure we already have two credits when we access. We'll only be on one, but after a successful run, we'll get the credit back. So we can still steal Ikua. So we'll spend the click. Continue to move. Tamir Roach. They can definitely res a bloop here. Again, it only costs us one card. They'll have to de res one of their ice. It makes technically their, their wave less good. Um, not that they need the money. No further action. Let's see two here and two card draw. Seamless launch. We knew that. Border control. Okay, that's scary. So we don't have two clicks left. We just run RD. Just run RD. Again, banners on the outermost. We're going to see two cards here. And then last click, we can maybe run archives. But this is probably it. Because we know they, I think they, we know they have two seamless, let alone they have seamless Vitruvius seamless. So they definitely do. This is the banner ice. So now this is a banner. So this is three net damage. So we're just going to take three. Install MK Ultra. And they're very kind. Thank you. Take net three. The thing is, that even if we steal like the Ikua, we have to get an agenda on archives. So we'll prevent the damage. Again, we could just take the damage if it's our last turn. But, uh, this might not be. Maybe not. All right. It's a wave. I think there's a lot of agendas in R&D. We're going to see two cards here. Maybe it's actually better to jailbreak R&D in retrospect. Offworld. Yes! Oh, man. What a game. Whoa. What a game. <laughs> Oh, that was wild. That was wild. I really like your deck. Man, that's so cool. This, this engine suite kind of works. It kind of works. Again, I do think we have a huge like matchup against Bloop. Like nobody breaks Bloop, Bloop really well. We do. Install no programs. Prevent the core damage. It deals with it so well. This deck is actually quite fun. Shout out to Ba. <laughs> Anyways, you have, you have the win in the remote. So apparently it's only Luminal in the remote server. Uh, Doom Red just could not find the five threes. Uh, which is, yeah, I, I think there's probably only two in the list. Maybe not. All right. This is going to be a shorter video. Huge shout out to Barheim for posting this deck. We did some tweaks. You'll see what those are. And again, I think you can tweak it from here, but we're off for this week. There's going to be no stream. I just want to put out some quick gameplay before the holidays, but happy holidays. We'll be back just before the new year. If you want to drop in for a stream, we'll love to have you, uh, but take care of yourselves, y'all. Hey, hopefully you enjoyed those games. Again, huge shout out to Baramu for this deck. I think this is just the beginning of tinkering with Apex, and I'm the first one to say that uh, I'm very surprised. I'm actually excited to play a bit more Apex in the standard format right now. Of course, there's a lot of very powerful and surprising cards in Parhelion. We're going to be off for a holiday for a bit. We'll be back just before the New Year's, and we're going to be testing out a bunch of this other stuff. I've heard Adam with World Tree is also quite cool, and I think World Tree, you can play World Tree anywhere, can't you? Again, these names here are just some of the nice folks that support the Metropol Grid on Patreon. Huge thanks to everyone here. And of course, to all our uh, daily cast patrons, your support is absolutely so appreciated. It helps me take the time to do these sort of things and uh, maybe get some more video content up. Again, we have our tier list video that should be up. Again, part of this is already on Jeff's channel. We have the runner cards that should be up earlier this week, I believe, on this channel. Hopefully you enjoy that recommended content right there. But happy holidays. We'll be back in a bit. Take care of yourselves. Ciao.